<laughs> hey guys, in this video, we're talking about real exchange rates and we're gonna try to make it really easy, okay? It's not an easy concept. In fact, it's challenging for many students, but we're gonna try to break it down, okay? Now, let me start off with just the definition of the real exchange rate. The real exchange rate is the rate at which we can exchange goods and services in one country for goods and services in another country. Now, before I get going, I want to talk to you about these terms nominal and real and what I have my students say in my classroom when I say the term nominal or real. And I want you to kind of think about what I have my students say and apply that as we go through this video, okay? So here it is. When I say nominal to my students, I really want them to say dollars, okay? And when I say real, I want them to say either goods and services or purchasing power. That's right. As the course goes on, I go, hey, that's nominal. I want them to say dollars, okay? Let me give you an example. What is your nominal wage? Oh, all your nominal wages is the amount of dollars you're being paid. Well, what's your real wage? Well, your real wage is supposed to be giving an indication of how many goods and services that you can buy. Put it this way. If your nominal wage goes up, all that means is you're getting paid more dollars. It does not necessarily mean you can buy more goods and services. But if you hear that somebody's real wage went up, and especially if it went up by like a specific percentage, like 3%, their real wage went up by 3%, they can buy 3% more goods and services. Again, the nominal wage just went up 3%. All you know is they're getting 3% more dollars. You don't know if they can buy more goods and services. So again, nominal, dollars, real goods and services, or purchasing power. Let's go back to that definition of the real exchange rate. Real exchange rate, it's the, it's the rate at which we're exchanging goods and services in one country for goods and services in another country. Now again, I don't expect this to all be crystal clear. It's gonna get clear as we go through the video, but I just want you to hear that. And you're gonna hear that term purchasing power also in this video. And guys, purchasing power, we associate with real also. So to get going, here's what we're gonna say, guys, is we're gonna be looking at the United States and Mexico. And the domestic currency is going to be the USD because I'm in the United States right now. So we're just making the domestic country the United States, right? So USD, US dollars. And the foreign country is going to be Mexico. So we're going to be talking about pesos. Now, when you find the real exchange rate, it is really important that you understand that you need the nominal exchange rate and you need a market basket priced in both pesos, the foreign currency, and USD, the domestic currency, okay? So to find the real exchange rate right from the beginning, okay, I need to know the nominal exchange rate. Yes, you do. And you need to know how much a market basket in the U in the United States would cost in USD and how much that market base basket in Mexico would cost. Um, of course, that would be in pesos, okay? So let me show you conceptually how we're gonna find the real exchange rate. Remember, goods and services exchanging for goods and services. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with goods and services, a market basket. That's what that funky thing right there is supposed to be. It's supposed to be goods and a market basket of goods and services. That's what that's supposed to be. So anyhow, I got this market basket. That's what I'm starting with. And I'm gonna sell it in the United States. And what am I gonna get? 100 USD. So I'm gonna kind of draw this out. It's gonna get ugly. There's that market basket, super ugly looking one of those market baskets, right? I'm going to sell it in the United States for 100 USD, $100. Now I'm going to head to the exchange market. And at the exchange market, of course, currencies are being exchanged at the nominal rate, right? We live in a nominal world. And so we speak to each other in nominal terms, right? You go to the bank, they'll give you their their uh, interest rates in nominal terms. When you're talking with your employer, they're gonna talk about your wage rate in nominal terms. We're in a nominal world, right? So I'm gonna go to the exchange market, and of course, exchange based on the nominal exchange rate, which we're saying is 16 pesos to one USD. So that $100 is gonna get me 16, sorry, 100 pesos, right? Try to clean that up a little bit, pesos. Well, those 1,600 pesos are gonna be able to buy, go back to this right here, oh, that market basket selling for 800 pesos, okay? Those 1,600 pesos can buy two market baskets. And there you go, you've got it. You've got the rate at which we're exchanging goods and services in one country for goods and services in the other country. That is the real exchange rate. You might be like, whoa, 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 what's the real exchange rate? It's two, okay? I mean, we can represent it as two market baskets in what? In Mexico, right? One market basket in the United States. Now remember, they're the same exact market basket. So that's the rate at which we're exchanging goods and services. Now, 
That definition never like settles perfectly with me. I like to really think of real exchange rates slightly different, okay? So the language I use goes as following. Let's start off with the nominal exchange rate, right? Hey, what we're saying is, what's the value of one USD? Oh, one USD gets me 16 pesos. That's the value in nominal terms. Nominal meaning currencies, right? In currency terms, okay? One gets you 16. But I think we all know, I don't know if that makes me richer or not. Like when I go to Mexico and I give my one USD and I get 16 pesos, did I just become 16 times richer? No, no, you didn't become 16 times richer. You can't buy 16 times more goods and services. That's just the nominal exchange rate. That's just the number of pesos that you're getting. But I wanna know my real exchange rate. What's really happening when I go to Mexico with my one USD? Oh, what we just found out is the following. When I head into Mexico with my one USD and exchange based on the nominal exchange rate, I'm getting twice the purchasing power. That's the real exchange rate, right? Real purchasing power, real goods and services. Let me say that again. When I take my $1, go to the exchange market and exchange based on the nominal exchange rate and get 16 pesos, I'm not getting 16 times the purchasing power. That's a nominal amount, right? That just tells me 16 pesos. But what I am getting is twice the purchasing power. That's what the real exchange rate is telling me. So again, what is that real exchange rate telling me? It's telling me, hey, when I take my USD to the exchange market, my purchasing power is doubling. That's right, that's what the real exchange rate is telling me. Again, to find the real exchange rate, you have to have the nominal exchange rate and you have to have a market basket priced in both the foreign currency and in the domestic currency. And once you have that, you can find that real exchange rate. Now, we're gonna boil it into a formula to finish off this video, okay? Because you're gonna oftentimes come across a formula, okay? So let me kind of show you what just happened, okay? What we did is we took that market basket, we sold the United States for $100, right? And then we multiplied that $100 by the nominal exchange rate, okay? So 16 pesos over one USD. But let's be careful here, okay? Or not be careful, let's just make sure we're marking things. So that $100 is the price of a market basket in USD. So that PUSD is the price of a market basket in USD. This right here is of course the nominal exchange rate, okay? Again, pesos to one USD. And then what we basically did is we multiplied this, yep, we multiplied it by one over 800 pesos. And what was this right here? That was the price of the same exact market basket in pesos, okay? That's just what we did when we walked through this. Again, I had a market basket. I sold it in the United States for 100 USD. That's what this is telling me right here. I then went to the exchange market, exchanged at this rate right here and got my 1600 pesos. Once I got my 1600 pesos, I went and bought as much of that market basket as I could, which was two of the market basket, okay? That's all we did. And so I'm just going to kind of move my 100 over to here, right? I got 100 times 16 over one times one over 800. So I'm just gonna take this price of the market basket in USD and just put it over there. And that's the formula you're gonna come across in textbooks, okay? You're gonna find, oh, the nominal exchange rate. Again, in this particular case, I wanna say it was pesos to one USD, okay, times, times what? Okay, so I got that 100, right? That's the price of the market basket in USD, price of the market basket in USD over the price of the market basket in pesos. There it is. This is the formula. Now, I don't love formulas, so I wanted to make sure we deeply understood when we're applying this formula what we're really doing. But I want to say something that when you use the formula, something to keep in mind so that you don't make any mistakes is, hey, the pesos need to cancel, okay? And the USD 
needs to cancel, okay? So if you had the price of market basket in pesos or the price of the market over the price of the market basket in USD, they wouldn't have canceled out. So to keep yourself making sure you're getting the right answer, go, okay, wait, wait, how do I do that? What do I do the price of the market basket? Oh, that's right. The pesos have to cancel and the USD have to cancel because we're moving from a nominal thing, which is based on currency values, into goods and services. And again, what we were left with before is there it is. See, there's no pesos there. There's no USD there. It's two market baskets over one market basket. Because remember, what was that definition of real exchange rates? It was the rate at which we could exchange goods and services, a real thing for goods and sir in the United States for goods and services in Mexico. There it is. Two market baskets over one market basket. But again, how do I think about it? It allows me to understand what I'm really getting when I go to the exchange market. I'm not getting 16 times my value. What I'm actually getting in real terms is twice my value. So I take my dollars to the exchange market and I'm heading into Mexico. If the real exchange rate really is two to one, I'm getting twice the purchasing power. And that is the real exchange rate. Watch it twice. If you watch it twice, I think you're gonna own this concept. We'll see you in the next video.